Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. Today we are going through my quarter three empties. Let's not chat too much and just get right on into it. First category is perfume and I am so pleased to say that I have hit all three goals that I had set for my perfume category for this year. Two perfume adjacent products, that's my Guerlain, Mon Guerlain shower gel and my Beauty perfumed oil. Alongside that I've got an actual bottle of perfume here which is my Guerlain Mon Guerlain. This one and this one were both my project pans so you know about that if you've watched those videos but this one was one that I've just finished up. The packaging had actually broken in this so I wanted to get it finished before it went off or anything like that. Um, you can see the the lid's a bit cracked there. I enjoyed all three of these. I don't think I'll be repurchasing any of them. I've got lots of perfume to get through as I'm sure any of you who aren't new around here will know. In terms of the total that is a quantity of three items used up. The body oil was worth $47.70, the shower gel was worth $52 and the perfume was worth $124. So in total, three items worth $223.70, all of my perfume inventory. Next up, I have eight makeup empties, which I am so pleased about because I really never do go through makeup. Um, they are all pretty much base products, so I've got two primers, um, a concealer, one, two full size foundations, a foundation sample and my highlight from my project pan again so I'm sure you've all seen me go on about how pleased I am for this one. In terms of what I used up, this was the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Foundation, I would definitely repurchase that. This was the Armani, this was in my project pan so I should have said the name enough times this year that I should know offhand but I, um, I don't, so it's the Supreme Glow Reviving Tinted Cream Crema Nuda. This I absolutely would repurchase, it was beautiful, but that packaging just is not the one. I had this for years because it can't sit in the drawer with the other foundations, it's too large, it's messy, it's prone to spillage. So packaging, absolutely not, but the product, beautiful. This I would definitely repurchase. This was a little sample of a MAC foundation, um, it was the one that's in the sort of paintbrush dispenser. Wasn't mad on that. This one you can't get anymore, so that doesn't really matter. Highlight was Benefit Dandelion Twinkle. I definitely would repurchase that, but I have a lot of highlight to get through. I think I had this in two separate project pans before it was finished. If we see that means it takes me at least two years to get through a highlight when I'm actively trying to use it and finish it up. I think I've got about 20 highlights at the moment, so I'm sorted for highlight for um, at least somewhere between 30 and 40 years. The two primers. The RMS Radiance one and the Suku Treatment Serum Primer. They were both fine, but I don't think I would rush out to purchase either of them. I just realised this had actually rolled off out of shot, so it was included in the numbers, but you couldn't see it. And yeah, this was what was left of my MAC Cindy Lauper lipstick. It had been scraped out of the bottom and into this little sample pot, and it is now finished. So that was the eighth item that was absolutely not in the shot, in case anyone was incredibly confused by that and thought I couldn't count. A total of eight items quantity wise which I'm very pleased with and they were worth all together $244.49. On to hair and again I finished another eight items. Three shampoos, so the L'Oreal Elvive Clay, Pureology, Pure Volume and the Philip Kingsley Body Builder. Of the three I have two more to use that are quite small but I did get a very good offer on a jumbo size of the Philip Kingsley body builder which I or body building sorry which I was always intending to repurchase so I have repurchased this one but I think I might also repurchase this one I liked both of these I didn't dislike this one if I had this one again it, I would absolutely use it up again this one's like a kind of deep clean one that I like to use every so often it's not like one that I'm using every single time that I wash my hair um, whereas these ones, I also finished up the, as you can see, the corresponding conditioner for the bodybuilding. Um, and for me, because I've got such fine hair that gets weighed down so easily, these two I just absolutely love for making it feel really, really clean, but not weighing it down at all. So definitely these are the two that I will continue to repurchase. I've already repurchased the shampoo, not the conditioner yet, but I definitely will once I finish up the rest of my existing conditioners but I think this one probably is one I would repurchase as well so these two are my favourites. Then I finished two hair masks, the Beauty Pie sort of equivalent of the Olaplex mask which I enjoyed. I don't have a Beauty Pie membership but if I did I would get it again but I also wouldn't buy a Beauty Pie membership just to get this so take that as you will. This I haven't repurchased yet 
but I definitely will. This is my Davines Alchemic Copper Conditioner. So I find this really useful when I'm getting to around this time of the month actually where my hair is like a week away from being done again at the hairdressers and it's just started to fade that little bit. I'm sure if any of you are redheads you will know what I'm talking about. So this is just great for kind of bringing that back up. So I have finished this. I haven't quite repurchased it yet but I'm sure I will imminently to be honest. I also finished up the Lazy Girl so this is like wipes for your hair to replace spray on dry shampoo. I didn't love these but my friend Lauren did so I think it, it probably depends what you're looking for. Um, I don't mind the texture of dry shampoo in my hair and I've got very oily hair so I feel like a traditional dry shampoo deals with that better. Um, this definitely did do something, it did clean it up a little bit but I felt like for me this was like day two not day three plus so yeah depending how your hair is if you're very oily like me I don't think these are quite up to it but yeah they're they're fine and I think what Lauren really liked about them is that they leave no residue whatsoever in your hair you can tell you've used anything whereas I don't mind a bit of residue in my hair like from dry shampoo that kind of feeling of it being there I'm almost quite reassured by that in a way so depends on your preference and the last thing that I finished up is this Virtue blow dry balm which was in my project pan it was fine but I think we all know I have a million of these blow dry balms and I really just need to get them finished up so uh, I won't be repurchasing that anytime soon. In total those are eight items from my hair care inventory and altogether they were worth $145.35. On to the biggest category skincare first of all the cleansing products that I finished up in quarter three I finished up the boots number no. seven eye makeup remover this is one of the biphase ones and I replaced it with the exact same thing I find this really gentle it doesn't irritate me but it does remove my makeup I have very sensitive eyes so to be honest once I've found one that works for me I'm not inclined to stray from it finished up two makeup removers one from Soap and Glory which I got in a set Christmas time one of the Lisa Eldridge makeup removers I liked both of these I have a few more of the Lisa Eldridge ones uh, I think I actually got four of them at Christmas because obviously I'd gone on and on about how good it was if I didn't already have backups I would definitely repurchase it anyway I can see myself staying quite loyal to the Lisa Eldridge ones so really really happy with that but if you're interested in the Soap and Glory one that was more of a like scoop it out kind of balm consistency. I feel for me when they're in a tub like that I over scoop and I kind of waste product a little bit whereas when they're in the likes of like the Lisa one is in the tube which you squeeze out I feel like I am more inclined to squeeze out less and maybe have to add more than when I scoop it out I will always tend to over scoop so for me, the Lisa Eldridge one is probably better. And then I finished up three cleansers. So the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair one, an Evelon one and a Venifex one. Um, I didn't mind any of these, but if I'm honest, I feel like the Lisa Eldridge one leaves my skin so thoroughly cleansed that I don't actually feel I need to go in with a second cleanser. And because the Lisa Eldridge, although it's a makeup remover, it's so hydrating that I sometimes use it in the morning, you know, put it onto dry skin and let it sit while I brush my teeth or something. I don't always use it just as a makeup removing cleanser, I sometimes do just use it as a cleanser. So I feel like possibly, and I could obviously change my mind in this because I've got quite a few cleansers to go through before I'll be in this position, but I could see me not really bothering to purchase kind of normal cleanser anymore and to just stick with the Lisa Eldridge one or even possibly that I might continue to purchase something like sort of salicylic acid based cleanser for if my skin's getting congested or whatever and I want that little bit of extra kind of backup of salicylic in there. I could see myself cutting right down to just mainly using the Lisa Eldridge cleanser in general so we'll see how, how that pans out. I've got quite a few cleansers still to go through so we won't be testing the theory anytime soon but I do very much like the Lisa one. So those are my one eye makeup remover, two face makeup remover and three normal facial cleansers to start with. On to facial treatment products. I finished up three serums, L'Occitane Reset Nui Serum, Sunday Riley Good Jeans and the Dr. Dennis Gross Fill and Repair Serum. Um, I like Good Jeans, I would definitely have that again. The other two were absolutely fine but I don't think they did anything all that mind blowing if I'm totally honest. Also finished up a facial oil which I was, or well an oil I think I actually mainly ended up using this in my cuticles if we're 
totally honest, but it's something out of my oil category, so I'm very pleased about that. And I also finished up, not that you can really see it, but this was the packaging of some Oscar retinoid serum capsules, so that's something out of my retinol category. So three serums, one oil, one retinol product, all finished up this quarter. I was going to say this month, not in one month, but in a quarter. I finished up four eye products, so two eye creams, the Sunday Riley Autocorrect and one from Soap and Glory. These were both fine, I don't think I'd rush to repurchase either of them. Two eye masks, both of which I enjoyed. I said it before and I'll say it again though, I think generally these eye masks, it's a sort of pre-party, one and done kind of treatment. Um, so yeah, I do really like them. I definitely do see a difference when I've used them, but it's not a long lasting impact. I feel like both of these are ones that I've got in gifts with purchase or whatever. So one's from Guerlain, one's from MZ Skins. I don't feel like these are things that I would have spent a lot of money on and I don't think they're things I would start to spend a lot of money on if I'm honest. I did enjoy them, I would use them again, but I'm quite happy with like the sort of Boots Own brand equivalent one or whatever. I think for how much of an impact it really makes overall to your skin, they're a one and done kind of treatment. They're not something I want to put lots of money into. I finished up three moisturisers and one SPF, the Dr. Jarch Ceramidin. I love this. I am very oily, so I don't use this all over, but I do get eczema around my eyes. And as I mentioned already, my eyes are very sensitive. So whenever they react to anything, a good thick layer of that just around my eye area really does sort them out. I definitely will repurchase this. I'm hoping for a Christmas set to have come out. I've not looked properly yet. I'm sure they're probably launched already at this point. But yeah, I definitely will bring this product back into my life, hopefully through a good value set. I also finished the Sculpted by Amy Cloud Cream. Now, when I first started using this, I was definitely using too much and I wasn't so keen on it, but you need so little of this. A little really does go a long way. It's very emollient and I actually ended up really liking it once I restrained myself and stopped putting quite so much of it on my face. So, uh, they have actually got a set out this Christmas already, which is £40. I can't remember what the RRP of this on its own is, but this is a 50ml. The set that's out this year is £40 and has an 150ml of this moisturiser in it. Um, so I feel that's a really good value for money, one which I could be very tempted to put on the list. I finished this Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. This is the nighttime one. Um, I liked it, but I don't think I would spend the money. I feel like for me, it's it's always been fine. I've never disliked anything that I've had from it. Um, but it's very expensive for something that whenever I do get samples of, I'm like, oh, that was nice, but pretty much just nice. Um, and then SPF, I finished this one from the Inky List. Now, I was slightly concerned about this because it said it was a dewy sunscreen, but actually I really enjoyed it and I'm quite oily. I didn't feel it made me overly oily or overly wet looking, which was the fear, obviously. So I would definitely purchase this again. It is probably a little bit thicker than other ones. It's not what I have repurchased, but I wouldn't put anybody off it. And if I was on a budget and looking for a good SPF, I would definitely return to this one. On to my face mask category, I finished technically five. Now, one of those five is, of course, the Origins Mask Miser. So this was in my project pan and I ended up using it more as a facial spray. You're supposed to put it on before using a face mask to maximise the benefits of it, theoretically, but I was never finishing it up that way. So I mainly just got through it by using it as a hydrating mist rather than a face mask, but it is in the face mask category, so that's where it's counted from. I finished the Elmis Papaya Enzyme Peel and the Origins Out of Trouble Mask. These two I will definitely, definitely have back in my life, particularly this one. I have missed this so much. So the Elmis one, as you would expect from something that's a peel, is exfoliating, it's brightening, and it doesn't irritate my skin, but it definitely does its job. And then this one, the Out of Trouble, I feel like once you've got spots to the surface this isn't great but I think for me if I've got spots that are that kind of under the skin way that just need to be coaxed out so they can come to a head and move on this is really really good so particularly because my skin is quite oily it does get congested these two are just really good for keeping on top of that I really really love the combination of these or either of them individually I have very much missed them <laughs> since I finished them up I'm trying to use some of my other masks before I repurchase them but nothing is touching these two so these will definitely be repurchased and the other two that i finished the origins clear improvements is a good enough clay mask i do find it a little bit drying i personally prefer the keels one which i find 
still is very effective but I just don't feel it leaves my skin quite as tight feeling as this one does but it is fine you know but I will repurchase the Kiehl's one the fresh rose face mask which is a nice hydrating face mask again this is a mini that I must have got in a set or in a gift with purchase or something I don't think it does anything amazing enough that I would go out and purchase the full size because fresh skincare is always slightly more expensive than I sort of anticipate that it's going to be for some reason um, I don't know something about the packaging and the branding, I never quite expect it to be the price it is. Although I don't think it's going to be cheap, I never feel that it's going to be quite, I, I always think it should be maybe like £5 less than it actually turns out to be. I like the mask and I've had minis of it before and I'm sure I'll have minis of it again and I will enjoy it and I will use it. But I just don't think I would actually spend the money to purchase it. In addition to those face masks, I also finished up some sheet masks. So I've counted this as four empties because this was, if you can see there, a box of three. So I waited until I'd finished all three before putting the box into my empties. This pack was the Sculpted by Amy Hydration Heroes. I did not enjoy these. Like what was on it was like a really thick cream rather than like an essence that you're sort of used to with a sheet mask. I will see if I've got a picture and I will insert it so you can see what I mean. And I didn't feel that the cream had kind of distributed all that well across the sheet to apply to your face. I felt like you kind of had to move it about yourself. All in all, not ones I would rush to repurchase. I mean, they were effective once they were on. I definitely found that felt them hydrating. I'm not saying they don't do what they say in the tin, but just... The, the experience wasn't that pleasant. I think there are other masks that are just as hydrating, that it's more essence-like, it doesn't feel as kind of claggy on the skin, you don't need to physically push the product around to distribute it, just not the one for me. And then the Dr. Jart Ceramiden, this is for when my skin is really angry or really annoyed. Usually it'd be a little bit too heavy for me because as I've said so many times in this video, I feel like oily is the buzzword of this video. I am quite oily and prone to congestion. This would be a bit too heavy for me to be using sort of every week or anything like that. But whenever my skin gets really flared up and really irritated, generally if I've had a reaction to something or my eczema is flaring up or whatever, this, this is really, really good for just calming everything back down. So I probably, ideally, if I could get a set that had this moisturiser and this mask in it again for Christmas, and I think I had a set that both of these came from in the first place, I would quite happily buy, buy the two of them in that kind of situation. The last two facial skincare products I finished up, well saying finished up seems a little dramatic, I used up a sachet sample worth one dollar of the Elmas Pro Collagen Marine Cream Day Cream, which I think everything I've said about the night cream applies to this. However, it's something that I used up and did repurchase, so I've already got another one of these. This is the Patchology Breakout Box, so this has two different types of spot stickers in it, plus also having pore strips. So if you can see in the back here, it's got salicylic acid spot stickers and then also the hydrocolloid dots. Um, so I feel like they're just good for kind of two different sets of spots. You know what I mean? Like if it's not quite get a head on it or it's a bit of a bump rather than something you can kind of suck up, the salicylic acid dots are better. But if it's something that's had a head you might have squeezed and you want the, the excess sucked up, these are better. So... Yeah, I quite like that you get the two different, obviously not that you should be squeezing your spots, but let's be honest, we all do. I just like that you get the two in this, and then the pore strip I'm not as fussed on, but it's there, so I use it when it's in the box. So yeah, I have repurchased the Patchology Breakout box already, and will continue to do so. And that leaves body care to discuss, so I used up two shower gels, one from Lush, the Sleepy Shower Gel. I got it in a set at Christmas, I don't think I would rush to repurchase it, but... If somebody got me it again, I would use it up. I also finished the Sol de Janeiro, the Bombardier Bright Body Wash. This was a repurchase for me and I definitely will repurchase it again. This is an HA BHA exfoliating wash. I can't say I see too much of the exfoliating from it, to be totally honest, but the scent on it is beautiful. So I definitely will repurchase it and I think maybe if I finish some other things at the end of quarter four, I might even treat myself to the full size rather than the mini. Verdun Hand and Body Balm. Didn't love this, to be honest. The scent just wasn't for me. So, you know, scent's wholly subjective. You might like it. Not for me, though. The Ellie Bruquet Hand Cream is another thing I wouldn't repurchase. Again, I didn't like the scent. And actually, somebody commented in one of my videos saying they'd had one and didn't like the scent either. 
This was better than the first one I had. Um, I got two in a Liberty box, well two separate Liberty boxes before I unsubscribed from them. The first one I think was like whatever their core scent is and I really didn't like that one. This one was a bergamot one which was slightly better but still not my favourite. Better hand creams out there scent wise for me. And the last empty that I have is one of my Patchology Posh peels. So these are the foot peels. If you're not new around here you've heard me go on about these before. I absolutely love these so definitely will be repurchasing that. Very strange situation if you've never used them before. You've put them on your feet for about an hour. About a week later your feet start to peel. They peel for about two weeks. It's pretty gross and then you're left with baby soft basically new feet underneath which I love. So those are my five body products that we finished up in quarter three. So in total from my skincare inventory I have finished up 35 items and those 35 items were worth $798.81. And in total for quarter three across all my inventories my entire value of items used comes to $1,412.35. And my entire quantity of items used in quarter three was 54 so I am really pleased that is the most items I've used in any quarter so far although I did use 50 in quarter two so only four extra but still we take it and it's by far the most value that I've used up so $1,412.35 this quarter and the two other quarters have both been three figure numbers so really really pleased with the reductions this quarter and for my, hopefully my next video will be showing you my addition. So I'm going to do a beauty haul video and then we'll look at the overall updates to my inventories. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.